This video is a review of partial derivatives. So before we were looking at functions in one dimension, so functions like f of x or maybe f of t, functions of a single variable. And now we're looking at functions of multiple variables. So our first example would be a two-dimensional function where z equals f of x, y. So if we wanted to know how does this function change uh, with respect to one variable while we're keeping all the other variables constant, that's where the concept of a partial derivative comes into play. So if we wanted to look here, we'd see the, the change of a function between two points here. So we have x equals a and x equals b, just as we did in the case of a function of one variable, but now we're keeping y constant throughout this entire, uh, throughout this entire region here. So we've got delta z, change in the function, equals f of b y minus f of a y. So whatever y is, it's the same at both points here. Then once again, we have delta x, which is the width of the region here. So b minus a, or what we might call uh, h. Okay, so that uh, is going to allow us to compute an average rate of change. So the average rate of change while holding y constant Sometimes in partial derivatives, you see these lower uh, right subscripts of things that are being held constant during that computation. So the average rate of change over the region from A to B while holding Y constant would be delta Z over delta X, which substituting in these values gives us F of B Y minus F of A Y divided by B minus A. So rise over run, just as it was in one dimension. So that gives us the slope of, again, what we call a secant line, a line that touches our curve twice and goes through both endpoints of that function. But what if we're interested, again, in the instantaneous rate of change, so the rate of change at a single point just in its uh, immediate local region. So that instantaneous rate of change which we now also indicate uh, holding y constant, would be the limit as delta x goes to zero of, let's see, I have delta w here. I guess I've changed that notation there from z to w. Sorry about that. Limit as x goes to zero, delta change in the function divided by change in x. Okay, so now we can define a partial derivative. So notice how in partial derivatives, we've gone from the regular uh, regular alphabetic D to this kind of squiggly script D. So we have dw dx, or the change in w with respect to x, the change in our function of x and y with respect to x, or the ddx partial derivative with respect to x operator acting on f of x, y. That's going to equal... Uh, much as it was in the case for our ordinary derivatives, f of x plus h, y, minus f of x, y, divided by h. So once again, the only difference here is that whatever other variables we have, those are being held at a constant value in both of these uh, function cases here. Okay, and other than that, <clears throat> we have the same rules that we had for any of our regular derivative operators. So we take the derivative with respect to this variable, leave the other ones untouched, and our constant, scalar multiple, uh, polynomial, trigonometric, exponential, logarithmic, all those derivative rules uh, for basic functions, as well as more advanced rules like the chain rule, the product rule, all those kinds of things, all of those still apply. So if we take the partial derivative with respect to x, of this kind of function, we have 2xy, so that's linear in x, so that becomes 2y. Uh, 3x squared z squared, so we have an x squared there, so that derivative is 2x, so that becomes a 6xz squared. Or instead, we could take that partial derivative with respect to y. Now x is a constant, and we're differentiating y. So linear in y leaves us with a 2x, and there's no y in this term at all. So this entire term gives a derivative of 0 with respect to y. And with respect to z, we have 2xy. There's no z there, so that gives us 0. 
and we have 3x squared z squared. The partial derivative of z squared is 2 times z, so that gives us 6x squared times z. And then other types of functions, uh, partial derivative with respect to y of y squared log z. Derivative of y is 2y, log z is a constant, so there we go. Or we could do it with respect to z, where y squared is constant, and derivative of log z is 1 over z, giving us y squared over z. And then finally, a last kind of function that we have, one where we'd have to use the chain rule sometimes. We have ddx of xy e to the minus zy squared. So with respect to x, everything else here is a constant, and so we just differentiate x, which gives us 1. So we, we're left with everything in the function except for x. We have the derivative with respect to y. Well, here we have to use the product rule. So let's see, we have um, xy, the derivative of that is going to be x, and then times everything else, e to the minus zy squared. And then we have e to the minus zy squared. That's going to give us a negative 2zy, negative 2zy that we're going to be pulling out. Not sure if that's correct. Let's check on that. Yes, that was correct. We had the extra factor of, we had a factor of y here, and we pulled down an extra factor of y from up there. So we have the negative 2z extra factor of y multiplying times that xy, and then e to the minus zy squared. So example of a chain rule and a product rule there, sort of. And the derivative with respect to z, we have everything here is constant, and then pulling out the chain rule from this exponent, we get a negative y squared that gets pulled down, multiplying by this xy, giving us negative xy cubed, e to the minus zy squared. So that's it. Um, no, no extra rules to learn, just the extra caveat of keeping all the other variables constant uh, whenever we're taking these derivatives and sometimes making note of that with subscripts outside of our derivatives.